Yesterday, while doing a program with Delegate Mike Hornby, we began talking about Berkeley County Schools and safety. And Sheriff Nate Harmon called in and expressed his concerns about safety in Berkeley County Schools. Now, unfortunately, uh, the uh, incidents of these types of things is uh, is way too many. One would be too many. We are way past having one. And Sheriff Harmon expressed his frustrations in not being able to get past discussion stages to get the improvements needed in the local schools. Jackie Long is the president of the Board of Education, uh, the vice president, I'm sorry. She joins us this morning in studio. Jackie, good morning to you. Good morning, Rob. Melissa Power also with the BOE via telephone. Melissa, good morning to you. Good morning, Rob. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. And the interim superintendent of schools in Berkeley County, Ron Stevens. Ron, thank you for coming in. Thank you, Rob, for having me. How close are we to removing that interim tag from you? I don't know. I think that uh, we're going to have to let things play out. All right. So let's talk about securing Berkeley County Schools and Absolutely. Sheriff Harmon's concerns. Uh, are his concerns legitimate? He mentioned uh, plexiglass covering uh, tempered glass in a door. Uh, he mentioned uh, some doors that uh, the hinges are dilapidated, need to be replaced, and an inability to get these items fixed in a timely fashion. Well, first of all, let me say that the cons school safety is a concern across the country. And uh, the, these types of items are the things that public schools face in, in every school district in America. Um, here in, in Berkeley County, we have had, um, we utilize buildings that are older and we're maintaining those and we're re we are replacing doors and hinges and windows and uh, everything that was mentioned yesterday on a daily basis. Uh, I did a little research. The specific um, example that he was referring to has been brought to our attention on April the 18th of 2023. So um, that is one of the situations that we're, that we're looking at. Uh, I've worked with our executive director of facilities and maintenance. That has been received. It will be addressed as has hundreds of other doors and, and windows and latches and, and hinges across the, the county for the, for the past few years. How timely can you respond to a request to fix something that could be a security issue? Um, well, when, when items like that are brought to our attention, uh, we do handle those in a timely manner. We have... Well, define uh, timely, though, I guess is what I'm getting Well, at. It, it depends on how quickly we can get the materials in. Um, you know, as soon as they come in, they're installed. Uh, we work with a company that, that does take a look at, at all of those situations, orders the materials as soon as they're in, they're up and replaced. Um, and that's, I, I don't know a lot of the specifics about that. I have not, unfortunately, I haven't, hadn't heard from uh, Sheriff Harmon or anyone um, that that was a, a complaint. Went through our normal process of filling out a work order. Uh, as soon as the work order's is brought in it is facilitated and taken care of so uh, that was not something that had reached a point where it was um, in the forefront of you know mm -hmm. called into me uh, I had, again I hadn't heard from Sheriff Harmon and uh, about that situation or anyone else out of the ordinary Jackie or Melissa have you folks met with Sheriff Harmon in regards to specifics of school safety and security Melissa and I met with Sheriff Harmon he asked to meet with us mm -hmm. Uh, right after we were elected and we did that and mm -hmm. um, that was the meeting that he told me that he didn't have any key keys for our schools and then I found out he has 66 keys to our school so and he talked about the Guardian program there somewhat and I think that's that's an interest and um, but there are you know our schools are the safety of our schools are um, paramount to us mm -hmm. and you know we have 400 million dollars in the school bond for safe school entrances and another 405 million for uh, cameras intercom sprinklers fire alarms so um, it, it's not that we don't take uh, safety of our students serious so I resent some of the things he said yesterday um, you, you know he needs to find out the full story before he gets on the radio and says what he says sometimes. Melissa Power. 
Yeah, so I actually had a conversation with um, Sheriff Harmon yesterday. He called me after in the afternoon, and um, we spoke for a little bit uh, last evening. And um, one of the things I had expressed to him was, irrespective if if some of the things that he was voicing his concerns about um, on the air are true or not, um, I I'm I was frustrated with the fact that that if he had gone through the proper channels, which um, to what he was saying he, he felt that he had, um, why not include uh, myself, uh, Ms. Long, or anyone else that is on the board into these conversations if he does not feel that there is enough traction? Um, I, before then going and, and speaking on air for something that we just had no visibility into. Um, so uh, I, I believe he heard me on that. Uh, I'm hopeful that, you know, in future that, you know, when there's a concern, um, it, it's addressed, you know, first with school, then with central office staff, and then if you need to bring us in because, you know, we're, while we can, you know, um, investigate our, on our own certain certain things you know the the people that are doing it are the people that are in the central office that then you know translate to to things that occur out in the building so um i'm i was frustrated on on that front yesterday and uh we did have a conversation where i did explain to him i wish he had come to one of us first before airing that on on the radio i've got other security concerns that uh, with some of the things he said um, I went back and listened to it yesterday and um, I was I was disappointed I would point out we did not uh, during the course of that conversation Nate did not offer up any specific school names uh, by the way which uh, we would not want to do because obviously we're not looking to make things target friendly here go ahead uh, John Taking the personalities out of it, I don't think anybody suspects that any elected official, any, anybody doesn't take child safety, student safety uh, seriously. So that, let's just push that aside. But now let's talk about what, in, instead of how things are reported, let's talk about what is actually in place. Is there, for example, a capital improvement program that's targeted specifically for hardening schools and improving safety concerns? You talk about being in older facilities. Well, that's obviously is, is, is true. But each repair, each bit of maintenance is an opportunity to upgrade. So is there that kind of plan in place? Well, before Ron jumps in, hold on. <laughs> I do this to Pat all the time. But we just did, and I hope you yes, all voted for it, we just passed a $150, $49 million school bond. Well, that that's, has, a, that's a plus. That has all those uh, issues in it. Now, I'm sorry, Ryan, go ahead. Well, and just so that we don't wander, it's that's a plug of money, and that's, and that's good. So That's a big the, plug of money. It is a big plug of money. Yeah. So is that then put into a plan that school A gets this on during July and school B gets it during August, you know, that kind of a plan, is, is that in place? Yes, yes. Um, you know, one, one really good thing that West Virginia does for its public schools is, is to require a uh, comprehensive educational facilities plan every 10 years. We participate in that like every other county, every other school district, and that plan um, points out improvements that need to be made and it includes safety. Um, in, in that so as we're progressing and updating and, and improving we do make uh, the necessary safety upgrades along the way um, you know I, I was listening a little bit to uh, yesterday's um, um, show and, and I heard uh, you know Mr. Hornby uh, spoke about money that was out there for hardening schools, and and Sheriff Harmon alluded to this this large pot of money that was out there for hardening schools, and I just wanted you and the public to know, uh, we we utilize that money. It is all earmarked for special, you know, it has to be spent on what it's earmarked for. Um, there are there were three recent grants for school safety and. Uh, one of those was in the amount of about $158,000 to be spent around the county to make things more secure. That's the terminology that was, that was used. But in the fine print, it had to be used for cameras, 
for special education classrooms. Uh, so while in the big picture it says for school safety, there are certain things that it has to be spent on, mm -hmm. and you know you can't go replace a door with that. You you can't re do an, an entryway with that. It has to be spent on cameras. Uh, so there was $158,000 at, at one time. Then there was a supplement of an additional $13,000, uh, 171000 that was earmarked for, for school safety, but then specifically said it had to be used for cameras, which is, which is fine. Um, but it, it, to someone that doesn't know the specifics of it, they think that we're able to go out and just use this money on whatever we, we want to. In fact, there was some money <clears throat> that was provided and and all of that has to be spent equally uh, the same amount of back creek uh, as at martinsburg high um you know for every school it has to be spent equally in, in those places um there was an additional eight thousand dollars that could be spent how we wanted to spend it um eight thousand dollars divided by 32 schools has to be spent equally it breaks down to about 270 bucks a, a school um so Yes, there's money that's being provided. Yes, it is for school safety, but it is specific school safety that they're they're giving us uh, the money for. And we appreciate every dime that we get because otherwise we'd have to do that on our own anyway. Um, so I just want to give a little bit of a, a of a nod, thank you for the money, but it's never enough. Uh, and school safety is, of course, number one. So we want to make sure that we take care of that. Um, Jackie alluded to the amount of money that, that our local people have approved for us to put into our schools and we do have a plan to be able to do that uh, looking at every school that needs a safer school entrance uh, attention to those doors and windows and uh, all of that is going to be uh, taken care of um, there's a scope of, of project uh, scope of projects a scope for the projects I should say uh, moving forward uh, so in the in the near future those things will be taking place once the bond money is uh, is released to us. And that doesn't happen until July 1, um, the bond money? It, to say hard and fast, July 1, uh, we're in the process of getting things approved right now. The bonds will go out for sale. Uh, you know, it, it's a long process uh, to go through, but you know, we will begin hopefully being able to utilize that money by July 1. Yes. Uh, Melissa, as part of your campaign, when you ran, some of the things you mentioned was uh, 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 in regards to the bureaucracy that is the Berkeley County school system, which is one of the biggest ones in the state, obviously, uh, that maybe the communication isn't the best from level to level. You're new into this now, but you've been in it long enough that you're no longer new, so to speak. Um, have, have you found that to be true? Is it is it as bureaucratic as you might have thought? Are there ways to speed the process? of repairing things when a door is broken or a piece of plexiglass is replacing uh, a, a piece of glass that would be more resistant to someone who intended to enter and do harm? Uh, are we as efficient as we can be? So one of the things I, I kind of want to go back to just a little bit there um, for just a second, Rob. I, first, absolutely there is more uh, in this than what maybe anyone who is not um, – on the other side uh, understands. I'm still very much new in, you know, getting my feet wet in, in understanding all of the ins and outs of things. Um, to be frank, I am surprised at some things, uh, how long it takes. Uh, other things, I'm happy to see that it doesn't take as long. Um, there, are, there are procedures that are put in place that um, you know, from my perspective as a citizen and, and parent, I think is convoluted or, or you know, excessive. But uh, when you look at it from the other side between legal stuff, you know, verifying that it fits within code and that you're not violating a regulation that you have to follow and whatnot, it's, it's a little bit more of a lengthy process. So, um, yes, there is – there is the the process that I was not completely aware of uh, that is I'm still learning and I wanted to thank you know several people from the board office that that assist in in helping me understand that but also to uh, you know Jackie because she's she's been in this for a while you know more than what she was you know bef before she was a board member she's been you know down in charleston and and you know working in the board office long before so she's got more insight than what i obviously have had and 
Uh, so does uh, Pat Murphy. So, I mean, there's there's certain things that we lean on them to, to help guide us understand why does this take so long or why does this have to be done a certain way. Um, I wish things were different. I wish that po- politics would stop getting so involved with things that, uh, I just don't think that they should be involved in. You know, we we want to educate our children in a safe environment, but sometimes these this red tape that the government and other bureaucracies have imposed upon our education system is uh, it's tedious, wanna, and it that's hard. I want to play a clip for everybody from yesterday's interview with Sheriff Nate Harmon. The request was made by the Berkeley to the Berkeley County school system. The request was actually $36,000. And instead of uh, actually, uh, instead of approving even half of that, they were denied, not given a reason why they were denied, and given $12,000 worth of paint. And that's the upsetting part. You know, the, the, and look, it, it's no one specific uh, that I'm pointing a finger at collectively. Um, it, it, it's time that we're, we're, you know, I know that they've been advised. I know we've had these conversations, and it, it, it's time to move. Uh, we are literally 10 years behind. If you look at what happened to Sandy Hook in 2012, I still have access points fairly similar um, uh, that uh, it, they need addressed. And I believe Nate was referring to a door repair that he is concerned about. And I'm not going to fault Nate for being concerned about school safety, nor am I going to fault the three of you for having to follow the proper channels that you have to follow to get repairs done. We're all on the same side here, which is trying to make our schools as safe as possible. It, 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 but is there a way of improving this process, Ron, when the sheriff identifies a specific safety point and not getting it addressed in a timely enough fashion? Well, according to him, yeah, I don't, I don't know the situation again, with the inside. First, first of all, let me say that that we have a, a we have a, a a good, or at least I think that we have a very good working relationship with the Berkeley County Council and our sheriff's department, um, uh, as well as the city, um, the Martinsburg Police Department, and our state police detachment. We we have worked uh, diligently. You know, I have worked hand in hand with those departments for the last decade. And I think that we have a, a very good relationship with them. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure where Sheriff Harmon got that information. Um, the first step that I would say is if he gets that information, when he gets it, if he would make that information uh, available to us, if there is a concern, um, you know, if we weren't listening to the radio yesterday, we still wouldn't know that he believed that there was a concern. Um, I, I know that Sheriff Harmon has my cell phone number. We we've, we've talked at all hours of the night over the over his time. Um, so I I believe that that line of communication is open and and available. Uh, the request for a door and they were given paint. That that particular comment. I I don't know the context. Uh, we don't replace doors with paint, uh, but there's plenty of requests for paint. So maybe maybe they did get paint, and um, I'm and I don't know. Again, I don't know the context of where he got that information. I know that we the specific door that he was referring to, we we figured out which one it was, which school it was. Uh, that is being taken care of. Um, I wish that um, those concerns could be at least kept in house for us to get an opportunity to fix those before we announce to the community that we may have a, a door that's vulnerable you know i know that you say you didn't say which school it was but even though we consider ourselves a large county there's only 32 schools mm-hmm. you know so to say that one is vulnerable that that, that uh, really made me uneasy yesterday so we did a lot of homework to, to find out at, only to find out that when the request came in on the 18th, it is being handled. Um, I do want to say that how do, how do we handle safety and security moving forward? During my tenure, um, we we have stepped up our our uh, efforts in safety and security. As a matter of fact, um, something that I wanted while I was in the office as assistant uh, this year I had the luxury of implementing because of the uh, upgrade to interim superintendent mm-hmm. uh, and that was to be able to have actual walkthroughs where we go to buildings and I, I have a team of, of people that includes uh, members who are 
uh, working for Berkeley County Schools, but also outside um, agencies who walk with our with our people to check schools out on a quarterly basis. Are these announced walkthroughs or surprise no. walkthroughs? Uh, it's announced that they're that they're going to be quarterly, but it's not. Hey, we're coming to your school at okay. eight o'clock today. Um, it, it's not a surprise when they see them. Uh, they know that oh, these are these are walkthroughs, so they know who the people are and that what their purpose is. Uh, and the goal there is to make sure people are on their toes at the school level and they don't forget and they're able to to have doors closed and locked and secured and going through the proper safety measures. We have a checklist that they go through uh, each time they're there and the school is provided with this information. If there's a, uh, a facility situation like a door or a window, that's then provided to our uh, maintenance and fil facilities um, executive director and they do a great job at addressing that. We work hand in hand with the governor's uh, regional appointee, Kevin Plummer, as the regional safety uh, appointee that is going around to schools he came to Berkeley County first mm -hmm. in his region he wanted to see Berkeley County first then traveled around to uh, all the other counties uh, that he's responsible for and came back to Berkeley County and has made you know, his remarks to us are in stark contrast to what I'm hearing from Sheriff Harmon I am not saying that we don't need to focus on school safety but I, I do believe that communication is the key also believe that walking around and checking things is a good idea so so, so i think oh, we okay. i think we may have lost um grasp of the fact that it's always easier to look from the outside yes it's always easier and and the sheriff is really good at um at pointing out things that are safety hazards um or needs to be improvements um we just recently had him do a comprehensive review of the health department lots of things we didn't even think about that he recommended and they were great recommendations but um he communicated with those to us a couple pages and you know um we hadn't even thought about those so um Definitely having our, our, our students and our teachers kept safe is key. And I know that is for the Board uh, of Education to make sure that happens. And I'm sure you have a mechanism in place for each of the schools for the administration to be able to submit like maintenance needs request um, to you. And if you don't receive those, you, you're not out looking around the school at every little part each and every day to know that there's something broken or needs to be fixed. So um, when those things are sent, and I know you have capital improvements, and it's great that you're able to do that through all the schools, through the bond, but my question is, do you have the staff to be able to fix all those? Do you have adequate maintenance staff to fix 30, you said 32 schools? Yeah. 32 schools. Do you have adequate maintenance staff to fix those problems? No. <laughs> well, I said earlier, there's never enough money, there's never enough people, there's never enough help. <clears throat> we'll take whatever we can get. Um, we we have staff, uh, our, our trained custodial staff for the day-to-day -day maintenance in the buildings uh, that's assigned. There's a supervisor at the county level to work with them. We have our county maintenance and facilities group that, that do the things that are bigger than the day-to-day. -day. We have a process where uh, the school administration can request work orders for items that, that uh, need attention. There is a process every spring for a large planning uh, opportunity for the uh, school administration to come to the, the senior staff, uh, senior leadership team, and, and say, hey, we would like to see this. We would like to do that. Um, you know, whether it's a fencing issue, a sidewalk issue, um, um, you know, a, a, a additional uh, safer school entrance, those things are available. Uh, opportunities are those for those are available. And we're really looking forward to using um, the, the uh, money that was allotted in the bond to take care of a lot of those situations. Well, my concern is that when you, when there are when there are concerns, uh, and as much as I love this station, don't get on the radio and share your concerns. How about taking it to the source? Did he get on the radio and share your concerns with all the? No. 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 So instead of saying that a door, instead of getting a door fixed, uh, they spent twelve thousand dollars on paint, which isn't true because we paint a lot. Call Ron.
call Joe Burton at the uh, at our facilities department and share those concerns. That that's my issue. And back to what Ron said about someone going around to the schools and uh, uh, quarterly, we do have someone. And and uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, I know someone told me that. Uh, they reported to their uh, teacher reported to their principal immediately there's some guy trying to get in the back door uh, back here well it was the person that's checking the doors to make sure that somebody didn't leave a door open or cracked or or it's broken so uh, to me there are ways about going about to, to report something that is an issue or the, that you feel isn't getting uh, taken care of and it's not that way uh, but we're just about out of time here melissa i'll, I'll give you a, a final word here before we get to our commercial break and the only thing i guess i want to really reiterate is we absolutely take our our children's safety the staff safety into consideration we've had countless conversations uh with uh central office staff with you know staff in the buildings to get an understanding of where the money that we're getting both with the bond but also you know when we're doing our budget um for this coming year where those things are that we need to get fixed so so while we are not just addressing the here and now we're also trying to look ahead and anticipate what those needs are so you know if there is a, an issue that um anyone has irrespective of whether you're the sheriff or um, you know, someone else within our community that is either a leader or a citizen, if you've got a concern, please come to us and ask us because it could have already been thought of. It could have already been earmarked with uh, funding. Uh, you know, this is the part that is frustrating on, on our end because it's when, when we hear something on the radio that is so concerning and we don't know about it, you know, I, I just I, I was disappointed yesterday, but I, I can absolutely say with confidence that safety is one of the top, you know, things that we talk about all the time from, you know, both outside the building and inside the building. Ron Stevens. Hey, yes, I just wanted to say that we're, uh, you know, we're looking forward to the uh, the sale of bonds coming up that our community and schools uh, received a high rating. And, uh, you know, I, I'm very excited about the the opportunities there. I wanted to give um, a, a couple of announcements. We're getting ready to celebrate uh, our work exploration students. There will be um, um, celebrations and relations um, um, relationships that will be celebrated at each of the high schools next week for all those students. We have an inter-county bocce ball tournament, which I'm really excited about. It's sponsored uh, in uh, cooperation with Special Olympics. It's going to be taking place next Wednesday, and on May the 1st, we're going to be announcing the Teacher of the Year. So I just wanted to put some positive things out there and let you know that you know we, we are looking at the safety of our students, but in the meantime, we're doing a lot of other, other things at Berkeley County Schools as well. Thanks to all three of you for coming in today.